Welcome to the College Football Week 7 Saturday Slate Breakdown. I'm your host, Jacob Wayne, joined here as always by Cody Maustrom and Will Schwartz. Getting into our next game here, and this is the one we've been waiting for all season. We've been talking about this game since June. It's Oregon at Washington. These are the two best teams in the Pac-12. I'm not going to apologize for saying that. They are a clear tier ahead of USC, in my opinion, right now. And... Yeah, revenge game for Oregon after they lost to Washington last year towards the end of the season. Uh, potential implications for the Pac-12 championship and possibly even the college football playoffs. So, Schwartz, you've got a couple of plays that you like in here. I'm going to let you kick us off on this game. Where are we going? Absolutely. Yeah, this is the one, and you said it. I was part of the crowd that was wrong on USC. I thought it was probably a triumvirate at the top. It's absolutely not. It's these two. Whether we get to see them again in the Pac-12 championship or not, this game is an enormous enormous precedent setter and as close to a quarterfinal as you'll find this early in the year so I'm absolutely ecstatic for it great uh centerpiece for the Pac-12 swan song season but as far as the plays for this game uh these teams are number one and two in the country in offensive success rate they're absolutely elite they've got two quarterbacks who if, if USC keeps faltering these two guys might be the top two vote getters in the Heisman Trophy uh, by the end of the season. I, I don't know. We can debate that as a whole other video, but Bo Nix and Michael Penix have both been absolutely fantastic. Uh, the defenses, they're good. They're top 50 by many metrics, but they are not these offenses. So we are going to play the over. We're looking at 67 and a half. I'm thinking high pace, air the football out. Uh, I mean, with both of these teams, it's always a factor that if they run away from an inferior opponent, will they just take their foot off the gas pedal and stop scoring? Shouldn't be a factor. We should be seeing quick, efficient drives all the way through this game as both teams will, I mean, probably need points the whole way through. Uh, it's, it's just going to be a race to the top, and I think that both teams are going to get into the 40s. So absolutely love betting you know, a number that doesn't even need to see one of them necessarily get into the 40s. The other number we're going to take is Washington minus three. There were minus two and a half earlier in this week, but... I don't know if that's available. It's been ping-ponging around, so if you're eight, I don't know when you'll see this video, so if you're able to get a two and a half, obviously go looking for that, please. But if you're not, I would say hit this three. Maybe don't hit a three and a half, but we're going to take Washington on the cover. They're at home, and I just think that in a game that's played on, it's it's on such a, you know, a level playing field. They're so tight. They're so similar in so many ways. We got to look at some of the very key difference makers. Quarterback, you've got the edge for Washington for sure. Bo Nix is having a great season. Michael Penix is a different, different passer. Keelan DeBoer, I don't want to steal Wayne's thunder on him, but I'm sure you'll get into him in a moment. But great coach. Dan Lanning, doing well. Not the same. And Husky Stadium is a massive home field advantage. It's going to be absolutely raucous for one of the last great Pac-12 games that will be played there, although this will be a conference matchup going forward. But Washington is a very, very tough place to play. And in a game that's really that tight, I'm, I'm just going to, go with the home team that I think has the better high-end playmakers and the better leadership. But this is going to be a phenomenal game. That's a half unit on each one of those plays, by the way, to kind of make a composite one-unit play for this game. Yeah. Um, last year, there were 71 points scored between these teams, which would have hit the over, currently sitting at 67 and a half. Tend to agree with that play. Lean that way for sure. Cody, are you on the over in this game as well? Oh, yeah, I'm all about the over. I'm so excited to see these offenses go at each other. We're talking about two of the most efficient offenses in football. Uh, Bo Nix, one of my favorite quarterbacks in college football history, just because he's absolutely electric to watch. He is the definition of a roller coaster. But the best part about Bo Nix is uh, comparing him to a roller coaster is it seems like that roller coaster always peaks up in the biggest moments. Um, we're talking Oregon top two or top five in success rate, both pass and rush. They absolutely capitalize when they're in the red zone, top 20 in both departments as well. And then Washington, I mean, what more do we need to say about Michael Penix and this pass attack? They absolutely thrive. They capitalize on all available yards. Very rarely see both units get stopped. Now you can pinpoint one potential problem to the over is that Washington is about to face the hardest defensive test yet. But this is where I kind of push back a little, and I am fully ready to eat my words with what's about to follow. I'm not going to say this Oregon defense is overrated. I am not that stupid. But we might be seeing some regression coming in because when you look at Oregon's schedule, these are the offenses they have faced. Portland State, Texas Tech, who I was very low on, go or not low on, who I thought was very overrated going into the year, Hawaii, 
Colorado, but the issue with Colorado's offense is, yes, they're good, but holy cow, were they beaten up in the trenches, so it just negated everything. And then Stanford, who I think is probably the worst team in college football, and I'm only saying that because Will's here. Yeah, I'm expecting full-blown um, regression coming, at least against Washington's offense. This offense is going to punch them in the face. This is something they have not faced yet this season. Michael Penix is the real deal. Now, this is not saying this is not any negative talk towards Oregon by any means. I truly think these two are, above and away, the best two teams in the Pac-12, and we're most likely going to see a rematch um, because I'm so low on USC. I'm so sick of that team. Um, so, yeah, give me points, points, points. Both teams capitalize moving the ball down the field, and when they're in the scoring position, they're near automatic. I'm so excited for this game. Yeah, I think the big – so there's two big mismatches that I want to hit on. Uh, the first is on Washington's side. I, we haven't seen this Oregon secondary be tested yet, like Cody's saying. They lost their top three corners from last year, including Christian Gonzalez, who looked awesome in the NFL before getting hurt, unfortunately. And they replaced those guys in the transfer portal and, and whatnot, but we haven't really seen it yet. We haven't seen them play an elite passing offense. And not only is Michael Penix Jr. the best quarterback in the country right now, for my money, they also have three surefire NFL wide receivers with Roma Dunze and Jalen Polk, and then Jalen McMillan is expected to be back this week after being injured earlier. I don't think the Oregon secondary can hold up against those guys. I think Washington's lack of a run game could hurt them at some point, but... I'm not sure if that'll be this week. And then on the other side, Oregon's offensive line is outstanding. Uh, they brought in this guy, Ajani Cornelius from Rhode Island, and he's been one of the best tackles in the, in the country, uh, third among Power 5 tackles in PFF pass blocking, has a lot of single pressure this year. And that line play is, is being elite is so important for what Oregon wants to do in offense, and that's get the ball out quickly, let, let Bo Nix make easier completions, he's not going to push the ball downfield as often as Michael Penix, but he's super accurate in the intermediate areas. And then the run game, it's all about the run game for Oregon. And I'm not sure if Washington can slow down that rushing attack. So frankly, I think this is just going to be a great live trading game. I might want to start off with an Oregon plus three and a half. If the number gets there, I'm kind of waiting to see what happens. I don't have a great read on the number pregame. I think this is about where it should be. I think it should be Washington minus three. And I have a lot of Washington futures to win the Pac-12 Going to be rooting for them on Saturday, but I don't feel the need to make Washington minus three an official pick at this time. I think this is going to be a good live trading game. So if you get an Oregon plus three and a half and you want to start there, come back on Washington live, and that's a good approach. But from a pregame standpoint, man, I, I just think the over or nothing would be where I'm at. Uh, Cody, anything else you want to add here? No, uh, I think we nailed the hammer on the head or whatever that saying is. <laughs> yeah, both teams coming off the bye, which I also wanted to talk about. Um, Huge for preparation, and yeah, Schwartz, I can't get out of here without showing Kalen DeBoer some love. Um, I can't wait to see what he has cooked up for this game. I think he is, I mean, there's, there's a lot of great play callers, a lot of great offensive coaches in the country. He's up there. He might be the best one, and I am i can't wait to see what he has cooked up for trick plays and downfield shots, and there's going to be a lot of fun stuff to watch in this game. Um, yeah, I've been waiting for this all year, and I, I can't wait. Uh, Schwartz, anything else you want to add here? I still want to push back on you calling Penix the best quarterback in the country. He should be the Heisman front runner, but I'd, I'd go number three. I would still go number three after the two guys that we thought it would be. But no, this is going to be a phenomenal game. I do want to verbalize that these, to me, are the third and fourth best teams in the country. And that that just gives us a, a semifinal type of quality. I mean, you don't really, these regular season games don't come across that often. Other, you know, outside of like a Michigan, Ohio State, or no, really just a Michigan-Ohio State in the regular season. So it's just a treat. I'm excited to see it as a fan of football and a fan of the Pac-12. I'm just, I'm so glad that the last season gets to have a game like this one. And hopefully a couple others, because there's some really good teams in the Pac that are about to start running into each other. It's a really exciting uh, time of year on the West Coast, and this is just a great way to get into it. I think both yeah, teams play awesome USC, game. don't they? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, and yeah, even yeah, if, even if you don't take USC seriously, like seeing so Caleb we'll Williams just, play against these teams is going to be really fun. It's just more so loser of this is essentially like at a semifinal against USC later this season to get to the Pac-12 championship. Yeah, I more mean, or less. The mid- the middle of the pack has some teams that could give them some issues. Like Washington has to go to Corvallis to play Oregon State later in the year. That's not that's not a gimme by any means. Um, there's some other ones on the schedule for these teams. USC especially has a lot of tough games coming up, so. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's a lock, but 
yeah, it, it's a clear top three in the Pac-12 at this time, and we're going to find out a lot about these teams on Saturday. So I think that'll do it for us. Loaded, loaded card here, man. Really excited for these games, and hard to believe it's week seven, but we are working through the season. Hopefully we got some winners on the card for you guys. Want to shout out our Twitters here at the end of this video. We'll put them in the description down below as well, but Schwartz, shout out your Twitter real quick. Uh, at Will Schwartz 75 And Cody? At K Maelstrom. So go follow us in there. We're giving out more picks throughout the week. I already got a couple of G5 picks that I like. So a little group of five action, some midweek bets as well. So if you're watching before then, uh, going to be another really fun week of college football. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Got a ton of great content for college and NFL. And we're going to be doing this all season. So we will see you in the next video very soon.